Thank you. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. Good morning. Came here, uh, Giovanni Capitone used to give us his team the day before, or maybe even two days before, sometimes the week before. Um, when are you planning on, when are you choosing the team? Is it after training? When will you tell the players the team? What is basically is, is none of your business when I talk <laughs> to the players and show them the, the lineup. But usually I've done it must day minus one in the afternoon so the players can sleep on the starting 11. That's, that's the normal way. If I do it now, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. And the reason for that is to let the players know that night before you don't wait till the day of the match. Yeah, and the, the reason I do it is it's good for the players to know and think about it in, in bed, match day minus one, and be prepared match day. And will there be any change in the shape of the RM team from what we've seen in the recent past? You'll see when we kick off, uh, obviously, and we're not going to talk about uh, how we play or, or our tactics, etc. You would know that, but it's a fair question. This game has a lot of um, history around it, as you know, I'm sure. Um, obviously, the uh, history between the two countries as well. But in relation to the game in particular, have you used that as a, as a motivation for the players, or are you aware of the the consequences around the, the game in terms of security, etc. Yeah, I've been I've been briefed on those things. I think for us coaches, it is probably not necessary to to motivate the players playing against England. I think it's probably the opposite for us to to just remind them what they should be doing on the pitch, focus on the tactics, etc. So. Yeah, that has been kind of what we have been talking about. It's probably to cool them more down and to, to get them excited and motivated for the battle because that, that is probably comes from within them to do good and be motivated. So probably it's, it's yeah, we've been saying it's, it's more our job to cool them down and get them focused on what they should be doing on the pitch. Hi, Javier. Uh, how's your mood ahead of your first match in charge? I'm really excited. First and foremost, I'm excited to, to feel the atmosphere. Everybody is talking about how good it is and I know it's going to be massive against England. Uh, so I'm just looking forward to that, working with the players in-game for the first time. See what, what we have been trying to do on, on the trainings will trans, transpar, transfer into the, to the match. So a lot of things looking forward to, and, but most of all to meet the fans and meet um, the atmosphere in, in Aviva. Obviously, England, they got to the final of the Euros, they're ranked fourth in the FIFA standings, so how do you go about beating them? <laughs> well, if, if Ireland has a chance to beat England, that's collective, for sure. Man for man, man, for man gong ho, probably nine out of ten England would win, so we need to, to play collective against them. Uh, and that is going to be the way to, to win the match tomorrow. Thank you. Hey Mary, uh, at the squad announcement you spoke about the influence John O'Shea had in selecting that squad because of his experience. <coughs> in terms of the team selection, is this very much your starting eleven, or will he have a big influence in that as well? No, I, I would think that we all put in our ideas before we select. Uh, but like I've said from the beginning, they have more knowledge, in-depth knowledge on the players, uh, and their view is 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 big in this camp and probably next one as well. Um, and in two months, you you cannot know all the players and their characters, etc. I'm trying to observe a lot uh, this camp to know more next next time we meet up. Is everybody fit? Everybody's fit. Yeah. <laughs> Are you fit? Yes. Uh, you're obviously well used to playing big games, big opponents in Dublin. Is there something about England and the history and the rivalry that brings out a different emotion in you? No, listen, it's a game It's a game we're all looking forward to. It's a game a few of us have, have played in before. Um, you know, it's Ireland v England, you know, speaks for itself. Um, and, you know, we're fully prepared and, and looking forward to a good, successful night at the Viva. But, yeah, for sure, looking forward to it. Yeah, 
Hi, Henry. Uh, can Nathan Collins or any of your other many center halves play in the central midfield? Yeah, a lot of them can play midfield, yes. Is this something you're considering this game? We'll see, we'll see. If I would be considering it, I would probably not tell you. So. <laughs> Seamus, what are your impressions of the new manager? The new manager? Yeah. yeah, no, listen, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's been good. It's been, um, you know, a lot of new information for us. Um, but listen, you can you can tell by the, the man sitting beside me. First and foremost, good man wants to do well for for the national team, and um, he's come into a, a good group of of lads that are desperate to do well for Ireland as well. So we're all looking forward to it. We've all been working hard. We've all been taking in as much as we can, and um, now we're really looking forward to it. And um, we we wish them all the best with the with the journey ahead. Thanks, Tom. Here we go. What are your memories of the night? Iceland beat England. What did that do for Icelandic football? And can you do the same for Irish football? I hope we would have the same result tomorrow. Of course, uh, it was, we were just speaking on the on the uh, in the car towards here. That night was kind of special. Everything that we did that night succeeded. Uh, whether it was tactical, it was finishing our taking our chances, defending our goal, and nothing that England tried that night succeeded so it was just one of those those days hopefully it will come again tomorrow uh, but we know we know even though we have our best game still isn't sure that that will lead into a victory against a good team like England so we just need to make sure that we have the best game that we can tomorrow and we'll see what what that gives us James, you've played on several Ireland managers over the years, but do even you almost have to start again with a new manager? I think you, you start again, yeah. For me, if, if you know me, every day, it um, doesn't matter how long a manager's been here or if they're in the door, you're always, we, well, you should always be trying to impress on a daily, on a daily um, basis anyway. So there's no God-given right to play for your country. There's no God-given right to play for your club. You've got to turn up every day in training and... Um, Give your best while while you can, and then it's up to the manager what he decides with who he plays or doesn't play. But as long as I know that I'm giving my all in training uh, day in day out, that's all I can control, you know. Big Hi, um, just following on from the, the Iceland's question, in terms of the England that you faced then versus the England that you see now that you're setting up, what, what differences do you see between them? Yeah, it's a, it's a totally different team. I think the individual quality, the, the technical skills, the speed of this team is, is much higher than the one we played. Um, also, they're coming off from a good tournament. Um, and I would say the biggest difference is that they have been staying together for uh, two months now. And we have three, three days to prepare. So that, that is going to be challenging because they, their routine is so is so drilled, whether it's on the pitch or off the pitch, whatever, and then coming from a good on a 21 campaign as well. So they, they come on a high here, players playing um, Champions League day in, day out. So it's good individuals for sure that we are facing. And, and yeah, like the, to answer the question, I think the individual skills is higher than the last England team I faced. And just one for Seamus, um, you, you'll be aware of all the noise around Jack Grealish, Declan Rice in particular, and of course Lee Carsley coming back. Um, just wondered what, how you see it. Um, are they going to get a hostile reception tomorrow night? Do they deserve it? Do they deserve it? I think that's a leading question there for me to give you a headline. Um, listen, they, they chose what, who they wanted to represent. I've said it for long enough, whatever they feel. They are, that's what, that's what they chose to be and I know Declan came and he played three games. I can only speak of Declan coming and as a, as a person, good guy, um, top player as everyone knows but I just want, to, want lads that, are, that want to represent Ireland and, and, and we've got that and, and we're eager to do well and them lads have went their own way and um, you know what, what reception they get I don't know but uh, it's kind of, it's been a few years now so it's not something that's of concern to me anymore now. Hey, how are you doing? Um, there's been a lot of talk um, in the build-up about defensive stability. 
come into a game tomorrow night with a packed Aviva Stadium. What can you promise the, the fans in terms of entertainment and excitement from, from your team? What do you mean with entertainment and excitement? Yeah, what what you know, do you what excites you? What what entertains you? What excites you? Well, football, football, attacking football, commitment, uh, aggression. Okay. So, so just to, to to understand the question, um, no, if you play the game in your head, probably England will have more possession than us. <clears throat> so defensively, we need to be really solid, taking the chances that we get, whenever we we have a chance to to play attacking football, go higher up on the pitch. We've already prepared for that. Uh, so I hope it's going to be a, a mix of both, but playing the game in your head. Statistically, looking at past games, I think England will have more ball possession than us. And if we are defending 60% of the time, then we need to be prepared for that. Uh, but that is how I see the game. Probably we will be de defending more than attacking. But when we get it, we have our solutions going forward. Hopefully, we'll score some goals. Whether we will have more possession than them is irrelevant if we score goals from our chances. And just in terms of coming into the week with your tactics in your head, um, how have the players reacted to you, you feel? And have you, had to, have you had to even simplify it more than you would hope or advance it more because they've taken to what you're trying to do? Coming in in such a short notice, um, I think it's, it goes without saying you don't, you don't like to do a lot of changes from the past. So we've tried to, whatever is the staff, the routines, what they do on the pitch. We, we haven't done a lot of changes, but some things that I think is necessary to try to force in in the beginning. We've been working on those. I think the players have been really receptive. We try to explain in a simple manner why we want to do it. And then, and then just showing them and both on meetings and on the pitch. So I think they have been really receptive. But in the end, we see that tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, Henry, you said that this week a lot of it would be getting to know your squads and that you'd need to kind of familiarise yourself. After the week of training, are you happy with the, the level of knowledge you now have on this playing group ahead of your first game tomorrow? Yeah, I think I've learned a lot this week. Uh, now, also, of course, meeting the players for the first time. Um, wish I would have had more time just interacting with them, but we, we have to prioritise our, our, our time. But I think after this camp, I have a lot more knowledge on everything than before it came. So it's going to be a good camp for me, whether, whether it's a good result or not. Uh, and I think going forward is a, is a really good camp. I can't even see a section now, so please write um, cancel and like.